Hi. So, uh, what I need you to do is open to your composition book and put in this, whatever assignment number your class happens to be on and your page number and the date and all that. <clears throat> and we're going to be talking about precision and accuracy. So you might want to pause here and get all that filled out and get your title on your note page and all that. Um, but we use them kind of interchangeably on a regular basis, you know, during regular conversation, but they aren't the same. And so that's what we're going to talk about is what's the difference between the two. All right, so let's talk about precision first. And let's talk about it in terms of an individual value, an individual measurement, and then in a group of measurements or a data set. So if you're talking about an individual number, uh, you know, something you read off a triple beam balance or off a graduated cylinder or something. The precision is indicated by the detail with which the value is expressed. Okay, yeah, so what does that mean? Well, for an example, 3.481 centimeters is a more precise measurement than 3.5 centimeters simply because it goes out more decimal places. Now, we're going to get into this in a couple of weeks, but it's not just some random, oh, I read it out that far and somebody else read it out 3.5. Um, there has to be a difference in the scale on the instrument that you're reading. So the 3.481 number was read from a more precise instrument than the 3.5 centimeter number. All right, so if we're looking at a group of numbers, a data set, um, then what you're looking for for precision isn't how, you know, compare them um, on how many decimal places they ha have. What you're looking for is the degree of agreement among measurements. How close are they to each other? Okay. Are they consistent? Not exact, um, but for example, if you had the number of uh, a data set that contained 4.4 centimeters, 4.5, and 4.6 centimeters, that is a more precise data set than 4.3, 4.5, and 4.7. The second set, they're just more spread out. And the um, earlier set, is they're just closer on a number line. So when looking at an individual number or looking at an instrument, what you look at for the precision is how far out, how many decimal places out you can read it. If you're looking at a data set, it's how close the numbers are to each other. Okay. Alrighty. So now let's talk about accuracy. Accuracy has to do with the correctness of your answer. Okay, How close is your answer to the known value of this thing? Um, the problem is, if we were doing an experiment, for example, and I wanted you to find out the temperature of um, boiling water, well, you could look up that the, the temperature of boiling water is 100 degrees Celsius. And that's easy. So now you know the known. If you measure it with a, um, a thermometer, you might get you know 99.8 degrees Celsius. And how close are you? So you're pretty accurate with that number. Um, however, there are lots of times where you don't know what the known value is. So... Um, the known value can be something that is given to you, something you can look up, um, something that is um, accepted or assumed. But I think when we get into doing um, specific examples of this, you'll find it easier to tell the difference between the two. All right, so here's what you need to do in your notebook. You know, I don't know, maybe half a page. To do, I want you to actually draw these in your notebook. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be, you know, four bullseyes, which we're going to write some stuff underneath. So make sure you leave some space. Um, so you might want to pause this right now and get this done in your notebook. Okay, so now we're back. And we're going to start um, looking at each one of these targets. Now, you can assume that you're um, throwing darts or shooting arrows or whatever it is that you want. But... This is what your results are, okay? So you threw six darts and they all landed in a little cluster right like that, okay? During this analogy, you need to um, 
you need to understand that the center, the bullseye, is actually the known value. Okay? So, you've got this clump, and they're really not near the center. So they're not near the known value. So are they inaccurate or imprecise because they're there? All right. And the next question is, um, remember we talked about precision of a group, not an individual number, but the precision of the group was based on how close the numbers were to each other. And those dots are pretty close to each other. So what you would say about this particular example is that it's precise because all your results are close to one another, but it's inaccurate because it's not near the known. And remember, the center of the target is the known. All right, so let's go to the next one. Oh, uh so you still have you still took your six shots with your um, your darts or your arrows or whatever, and this time they all landed in the center. And remember, the center is the known. So what would you say about this? They're clustered together, and they're at the center. So you would say that they were both precise. That that data set is both precise and accurate. Okay. So they're both precise be, um, because the results are clustered together pretty closely. The first one is inaccurate because it's not near the center. The second one is accurate because the results are in the center. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Oh, what does this mean? All right, so our results are not clustered very well. So immediately you should be able to figure out what that is. Um, whether it's precise or imprecise. The tricky part comes when we start talking about accuracy. Is, is this accurate or inaccurate? Well, when you have a data set, um, let's say, I don't know, you timed how long it took for you to drop a ball out a window and for it to hit the ground. And hopefully you did multiple trials. So this could represent six multiple trials of throwing the ball out the window. What then do you do with those numbers in order to sort of wrap up your experiment? What you're going to do is you're going to take an average of those numbers. So let's take a look at this and see what, what that would do. So if I, oh, so sorry, so it's imprecise because they're not clustered, but it is accurate. Well, how can it be accurate? Not one of those touches the center. But watch what happens when we average. So we connect those two dots. The average would be in the middle or in the middle of the line. We average those two, middle of the line. We average those two, middle of the line. So in fact, when we average all six of these points together, what you're going to end up with is a number that's in the center. So the average is near the known, so it is accurate. Even though it's imprecise because the numbers are spread out, you actually get an accurate answer when you do the math. I bet you can predict what this next one is going to look like. Ho ho! All right, so draw those on. So they're not clustered together, so immediately you should know what that means. This one's a little trickier to um, average out, but um, it's, let's see what happens next. It's imprecise because the, the dots are spread out they would have to be clustered to be precise. But it's inaccurate because if I try to take the averages of all these, I get some number that's not, that's nowhere near the center, the nowhere near the known value. Okay? So precision has to do with, in a data set like this anyway, how closely um, aligned the points are. So if they're clustered together, they're precise. If they're spread out, they're imprecise. Accuracy has to do with how close it is to the known value. So either they're all in the center, or when you average out the numbers, they give you um, an answer that's close to the known. So if you have any questions on this, which you might and you probably do, write them down in your notes, bring them to class, and you and your teacher will talk about them. All right. Thanks for listening.